now. Howdy. That's Travis. I'm Kevin. This is our good buddy Patrick. And this is h and Prospecting. If you already subscribed, thanks for tuning back in. If you haven't subscribed yet, we hope you like what you see today and you stay tuned to the end of the video and you smash that like and that subscribe button. What are we doing today? We're doing a back to the basics video. Patrick was kind enough to take us out to one of his places last weekend and show us some real nice shinies. So we brought him to one of our favorite spots to get him on some gold too. But what we wanted to do for you, <laughs> thank you bud. What we want to do for you guys today is just kind of a back to the basic video. We're going to show you how to set up the sluice box. We're going to show you how and where to look for gold and why it's depositing here or why we believe it's depositing here and kind of how to test an area. And we're actually going to, Travis is going to break down on how to actually pan material out for us today. I think that's about it. You got anything else you want to add? You got anything else you want to add? All right, guys. Pitter patter. Let's get at her. <laughs> Water here to get the flow up. So, talking about how to set up a sluice, what we've had to do is there was not much water in this channel, so we've stacked rocks all along here, along the past, pushing water into the channel, and then again, setting rocks here before we put the sluice in. So we're supposed to kind of be showing you how to set up a sluice, but because this is just going to go really quick and easy for us, because we just happen to be in the greatest spots that we can hope to be in, by just simply throwing in a few more rocks on the other side of the bigger sluice, that's created a channel for us, but there's already a natural fall in the bedrock where our sluice is going to be sitting. I believe the general rule of thumb for, for a drop is one inch per foot, so it's all going to depend on your water flow. So, setting in the sluice box. As you can see, we've already created dang near perfect V going down the middle. I'm going to put a rock across the top of that just to hold it in place, make sure she don't go nowhere. Then we'll take a small handful of material. We'll take a small handful of material. We'll take a small handful and put it down the sluice box. Making sure that the material is actually flowing towards the middle, not getting stacked up on either side of the sluice. And that, in fact, not huge rocks because we know we are classifying down to half an inch before going through the sluice box actually moves down the sluice make adjustments as needed whether you gotta change your pitch left to right putting rocks either in the front or the back of your sluice but uh lucky for us it's pretty much running perfectly already so the only big concern after that make sure that your tailings stay clean at the end of your sluice box you do not want your tailings piling up back here because if that ends up happening you'll end up getting material pushed back up the great thing about those big sluices that Patrick is running his was even easier you can pretty much I mean I've, I've been told I've been told you can bury those things three four feet underwater as long as you've got the V flowing through them so but yeah, let's actually dig some buckets and then we'll show some material going through the sluices. That's it. Oh, look. Oh, man. That cleaned out. That cleaned out faster than a new bidet. All right, pitter patter. So I'm going to keep chasing the same hole I've been working. I'm going to start by removing the big rocks from the top. Knock a bunch of material down scoop the material out, classify it, take it to the sluice, and then I'll go back over it, uh, the exposed bedrock, once I get the water and kind of muck out of there with the brush. I've done that before, thought I got everything out of the hole, went back in, and ended up coming up with a couple of flakes that I couldn't even see stuck to the sides of the bedrock. I'm at the top of this channel again. Travis is down there at the middle of the channel, kind of working towards each other. Patrick is up on the hillside doing some crevicing. We found some gold up there too. Careful, bud. We're locked. Let me show you real quick what my idea is and what I'm chasing. This is the exposed bedrock that I've already found. You can see the material was much higher. I am working my way towards the river. The river actually takes a bend right here and out this way 
all heavies when flooded gets pushed up and over through this material through this exposed bedrock so where I'm actually at now and what I'm aiming for five feet in front of me is exposed bedrock coming out that also turns back towards the river and right where Travis is digging so the idea is to kind of follow that exposed bedrock and hopefully finding pockets and things trapped through here because the bedrock does its own natural sluice box. box. We've seen that on the other side of this exposed bedrock. I'll show you what I mean real quick actually. You can see it right where I'm standing. So the bedrock comes up and it drops. Oh, it drops enough for me to get my boot wet into these pockets. Rises a little bit, drops, rises, and drops. So I want to find that but underneath all of this. And hopefully find some nice shiny. What do you think, Star Lord? Is it here today? So now that we've moved a bunch of more big rocks out of our way, got a bunch of material loosened up and exposed all around that big rock. That's the one I tried to move and tore in half. Now I see why it didn't move because it is still, or was still and still is, 8 to 10 inches underneath the dirt. When I got down in there, that mud started getting really thick and clay. That sand started getting thicker. Always good signs of heavier materials with more minerals. That can be oh bedrock's breaking apart always a great sign too uh that can be holding on to trapped gold so what we'll do now is we'll get some water in our bucket we'll get our half inch classifier and we'll get this all scooped up the reason you want to get that water get all that material clean it's going to bust up any gold that could be stuck to some of those rocks and also break all that clay apart you don't want to be sending big balls of clay down your sluice that's just going to be holding on to the gold and pushing it right back into the river. So, better pat her, get some water in there, and get back at her. Let's watch Travis classify some material real quick. Ooh, filling up the bucket. Oh, the classifier. That is an in, in bucket, half inch classifier. Nothing special, just one of your Garrett's. Get them anywhere with any kit. I suggest you get them from Armadillo Mining if you live in Southern Oregon. Once you have your classifier full, you're going to give her a shake, 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 shake. And notice all the heavies, or all the sands, are actually dropping through and exposing the rocks, the bigger rocks. Clean off any roots. You know, roots like to hold on to gold. As your bigger rocks get exposed, see Travis is flipping them over. That way any dirt left on the bottom is getting knocked off. A couple of shakes. Keep your classified materials in a pile so you can go over them with a metal detector or pick through them. Uh, if this was a new place, we'd probably take more time to actually look through the classified materials. But we're pretty sure there's no half inch nuggets here. And if there are, we'll see them right on top anyways. Oh! Well, with some big rocks there, are you, bud? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's heavier than I thought it was going to be for one hand.
have a bunch of classified material in the bucket. Let's go feed the sluice. Um, 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 um. Oh, Travis is already feeding the sluice. Let's go watch Travis feed the sluice, I guess. Do, do, do. Ba, 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 do. Oh, get up, please. Oh, you get yourself a nice, healthy scoop of wet material. You know, dump it in the top, shake it back and forth to help that material break up and spread evenly over your sluice. You're going to wait until at least that first ripple is completely clear before, or just about, you don't want them to be buried, before you add your next. Look at that chocolate milk that we're making. Watch those last bottom riffles, make sure they're not getting buried. And then at the end of your sluice, make sure those tailings are carrying out. And occasionally always check that siding mat for all of that beautiful shiny. Wow, oh, sorry. That's a lot of shiny. Pretty tough colors in there. I hope that shows up. Bob's not here, you know, the big orange ball in the sky. The sun. Hopefully, oh, keep feeding it. Make that chocolate, chocolate, make it milk. Scream shiny. You need to stop with your remakes, Kevin. They're terrible. Do you think you have better remakes? Leave them in the comments. I like Goofy's 90s stuff. Patty got anything to hiss loose? Oh, jeez. Looks a lot bigger. Maybe it's just because it's underwater. That's the only reason his looks bigger. Hey, we're gonna, let's start with the metal detector, maybe. Maybe he has some lunch. I don't know. Oh, no. Let's go check out Patrick's classifying system again. That thing's cool if you haven't seen it. As with anything in life, there are multiple ways to do things. You see how we just use a little hand scooper? Fancy <laughs> though, it's got to be a lot, a lot easier on the back. Yeah. Speed it nice and slow, but that's the nice thing about having a, that's a payout for carrying a big sluice down. Yeah. Carry a big sluice down, you get to feed it faster. A lot easier setup too. Big sluice, little sluice. A lot of gold in that little sluice, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boy. So we put Patrick right in the middle of us. Now it's up. Travis is at the bottom. Rise bedrock. He's digging right smack down the side of it because he's a smart man. And it's just dropping and exposing pockets. And we're already seeing gold in this siding mat. So again, Patrick, thanks for helping us really find where the gold is depositing here. Yep, yep. We're all three in a line, boom, 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 and all finding the same amount of gold as we go. But what I really came over here to bother Patrick about, if you guys haven't seen this yet uh, in the last video, this is the gold slinger bucket. Yep. Gold slinger bucket from Bob Alvarez. Uh, about how much material do you feel? I do it about a third of the way full. Third so, of the way full? Yeah, before spinning it. All right. If you do it more than that, it tends to overload, gets kind of heavy, it's just harder than it has to be. So, so bucket bucket in a bucket here. Throw the way full. Give her a couple of pumps. Spin her around a little bit. Everything nice and clean. The gold slinger bucket from Bob Alvarez. Oh, oh. I'm going to try to get a couple of these because I want one myself. And then I want to give one away to you guys. So yeah, leave your questions, comments, concerns. Let us know what you guys think about them. And I'll try to get one to you. Thanks, Patrick. Absolutely. Anything good? We're getting ready to pull the sluice. But before we uh, do that, let me show you how that's done. We're going to let it run for a little bit and kind of clean itself out. 
And I'm also probably going to put the pulling of the sluice out in too fast mode. But I did want to show you all the shiny in the siding mat. And this is not even what we're going to see once we pan it down. Travis is going to give us a quick panning lesson today too. But that is definitely promising. I'll show you how to pull this by yourself. Step one, always put your foot behind your box. That way you don't lose your box going down the river. Remove the large rock that you have holding in your box. We're going to slowly lift and tilt to one side, trapping all the gold and the material in the box as you lift it out. Carefully take, oh, those are slippery. Gonna bring your box. Over. Clean the bars. I'm just all concentrating on the gold stuck in the siding mats. I can't wait to see what's actually trapping the rest of it. Carefully set your bars aside. Shake the grate. Shake, shake, shake. Do you want to make it? that miner's mount. Give it the old washboard dunkaroo. Swish, swish, swish. Clean. That's clean. Repeat with the carpet. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Come on. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Get it all for the shiny. Get all nice, duck that right. Washer opening up the different riffles in between the layers of the carpet. Carpet matting layers. Looking over. And here comes the fun part. And you squeeze the sides of those to make sure they go in the bucket. Oh, we got a pan over here. Got another bucket right there. Ooh-wee! Let's see, let's count them. One, two hundred. Three. <laughs> uh -oh. Wash that out and chill down the sluice into your bucket. And that's that. We'll take that material from there and we'll get it in the pan. We'll show you that process. So a mistake I always made putting my sluice back together before I got my gold hog mats. So I always put the expanded metal in the wrong way. Always make sure that your diamond riffles are pointed up. It's kind of really hard to show that on camera 
but if you look at them upside down or the other way, you're able to tell which way they are. It's a lot easier to see in person if you have it wrong. I'm not going to show you Patrick's entire process of fitting out his. There's another way. He just put his bucket or his sluice right in the bucket while he's still in the river here. Then he's going to pull his big rock off the top and then just simply pick up the whole sluice box into his bucket. And then he'll clean it out from there. Notice the sluice part of the pan is pointed away from where the material is going into it. That way, the material tries to come up out of the pan, it gets trapped in the ripples. So even though we ran a total of 10 buckets through that sluice today, let it clean out for a couple minutes when we're done, we end up with three quarters of a can of material. I have a lot of black sand in that. All right, so I always recommend not panning a full pan of material. It makes it a lot more difficult. You're going to swish it side to side, get all your material into one group, make sure it's all wet. Then give it a good shake, tilting forward just slightly so that the bottom rim of the pan is your low point. And then you're going to give it a wash, let the water come up to the top, and you're trying to wash this light material that gathered right up here off the pan. Two or three washes. Get all your material back together, give it another shake, and wash, and repeat. The idea is you're stratifying the material so all the gold is going to fall to the lowest point of the pan. So you want to make sure that this rim on that side is your lowest point. Pick out big rocks as you get to them. I already saw a piece of gold. <laughs> so generally the rule of thumb when you're washing, as soon as you see black sand or gold, you stop and you spin again. But there's so much black sand here that I'm just going to keep going. And I'm starting to see gold peek through, so <laughs> that's probably as low as I'm comfortable going. Have a look at what's in there. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. There's a couple methods here. A lot of people swirl or bring it up both sides. As soon as the water meets at the top, tip it backwards. <laughs> the idea is to move the white material and not move the gold, but as you can see with all this black sand in here, it's really hard not to move the gold. Ooh. So this is the kind of stuff we will take home and run in the blue bowl. Perfect.
curse word, curse word. That is some gold, bud. Yeah, I'd say this was a pretty good one. Wow! <laughs> yes, sir. That's a good day. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Alright, normally I wouldn't do this, make him do it twice, but I am going to because he already showed it to me. But two and a half buckets. Man, that's a lot of black sand. Not easy panning. That is what. The... Man, it's impressive. I really hope this camera is picking up all these. <laughs> There's a couple nice flakes coming out. A little steam here. Yeah, buddy. It's a good day. Oh, there's some more chunkier flakes. Rough colored. Yeah. There it is. Wow. Quite a few flakes, man. Hundreds of micros, but I mean, uh, there had to be 10, 12 flakes in there better. Borderline thousands of micro fly poops. Thanks Good for coming stuff. out, Patrick. Thanks for having me out, guys. Boom! Slushing with the boys. Slushing with the boys. <laughs> Heard, uh... Smash and subscribe, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a pretty amazing day. We love coming to this spot because we always find some color here. Um, but, you know, we invited another friend out and found way more color than we have ever found here. So I think we kind of got it dialed in uh, where the gold is depositing in our little spot. And uh, we put him right in the middle of us, and he found some nice chunky stuff, too. So I'm really excited to get back and continue cleaning the spot. Um, you guys have any questions about any of the things that we went through today? Setting up the sluice, cleaning out the sluice, panning, crevicing, how to, you know, move material or how to classify it down. Um, leave them in the comments. I love talking to you guys. If you have any suggestions for me, I am an open mind, and I love learning. Um, I think that's going to do it for us today. Guys, thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and as always, get that shiny.